wanted to go over uh, when uh, the opponent has said that they do these true crimes such as rape. Um, rape is a lot of things under our uh, our laws, such as when a 19-year-old guy ends up having sexual relations with a 17-year-old girlfriend, he's going to be going to prison for rape, and he's going to be put on uh, felony charges on him. And then, on with that, when, when they said there was no trust, there was a uh, and a, a quote from Steve Chapman, the columnist and editorial writer at the Chicago Tribune. Um, we let uh, ex-convicts marry, reproduce, buy, beer, own property, and drive. They don't lose their freedom of religion, the right against self-incrimination, or the right to not have soldiers quartered in their homes in time of war. But in many places, the assumption is that they can't be trusted to help choose our leaders. If we thought criminals could never be reformed, we wouldn't let them out of prison in the first place. And this also goes with a, a satisfactory, uh, their, uh, their, um, their payment to society wasn't enough. Well, by law, they have been, they have paid their debt to society. And then when they spoke about the voting, voting right, or freedom of speech, not being taken away. Well, when voting rights, it, it's the ability to speak to your government legally. So by taking this away, they're losing a form of freedom of speech. And then just to go on, uh, Jason D. Shaw, associate with the Steptoe and Johnson LLP, uh, stated social contract theory and objective of punishment fails to provide a satisfactory explanation for the denial of one of the most fundamental rights to millions of citizens. Right. Going back to the small percentage that I said, uh, when you take that small percentage and apply it to a lot of people, it's going to be a lot of people still, even if it looks small. Okay. That would be